Good morning. Uh, well, for my first time, good morning and uh, thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for us to go back in history, the 25th of June, many years ago. And uh, very similar to the story that we shared yesterday, uh, we spoke about the Civil War yesterday and the Nazi surrender. We're going back to 1950, where there was another war and the start of another war. Um, the war that we're speaking about this morning really was, as a, it was a part of the fallout of the end of the Second World War. Uh, where North Korea and South Korea uh, simply, you know, became uh, almost enemies. And of course, uh, the United States and China, uh, you know, took sides. And it was obvious what sides that they were going to be taking. Until now, the United States is still strong allies with South Korea, while China seems to be, you know, allies with North Korea. So it was on this day that the Korean War began. It started with North Korea attacking South Korea, um, and of course, uh, forces headed towards the South Korean capital were attacked in Seoul. The United States responded by pushing a resolution through the United States Security Council. And with that resolution in hand, they joined the war in defense of South Korea. Later in the 1950s, China then also stepped in, um, in defense most likely of North Korea. This lasted for three years before a ceasefire agreement uh, um, you know, resulted in a continued uh, division of the North and South Korea uh, as uh, two separate countries. That, that happened in 1953, after three years of a very, very, very serious war. Um, so yeah, it, it was three years of the, of the Korean War that started on this day in 1950 and uh, basically painted a very, very clear picture of um, where countries stand with regards to the allies that they, you know, that they hold strong. Wow, North and South Korea, very historic um, day today, the beginning of that um, attack by North Korea yeah. on the South advancing you know, straight into the capital in Seoul. And, um, you know, really what you said about alliances, it, it really changed and shaped the conflict. And remember back then how, first of all, there was the, uh, what's it called, the, there was a Cold War, there was the whole challenge of the USSR, there was a World War One, the World War Two, and each side had allies, each side had, you know, countries that were supporting it in the fight. How the UN, um, the United Nations, the United States came into this flight fight and basically just shaped the course of the next few years of North and South Korea. Now, you know, it's, it's said that it's one of the most heavily militarized zones in the world. Yep people crossing, people defecting, you know, it's just... And, you know, they always, well, I think I need to also, you know, learn a little bit more about why they, you know, just don't like each other. Um, and why they're and why so it's different. So strict. Yeah, not necessarily different. They, they just are have, different. You know, different <laughs> forms of government. <laughs> and why it's so No, not strict, just the forms you know. of, I mean, life is as though there yes, were different cultures, yes, different cultures, yeah. different religions, different ideologies, those sort of things. So, yes, they are yeah. different. Um, and it makes you wonder also, you know, if, if that really is, you know, uh, is the answer to certain countries, even here in Africa, that, you know, the, the northern and the southern regions just don't seem to get along, you know, very well. The, for a long time uh, in Cameroon, the Anglophone um, and the Francophone areas don't seem to be best of friends. Um, mostly, you know, um, the political aspects of it. And, um, you know, if you had followed, I think about two, three years ago, there were um, real issues at the Anglophone areas. They had shut down social media, shut down the Internet. Um, nobody was allowed to leave. You couldn't travel. And uh, there were, you know, atrocities being carried out by their government and their, you know, security agencies. So there is that. You know, of course, you could also look at the Sudan issue where the, both countries, uh, both regions decided to split. Um, still has not been able to answer. Uh, the questions concerning that country and how they can heal and become better, they still continue fighting each other. Um, and not long ago, we heard about Southern Kaduna wanting to be their own state. Yes. So when you, when you see how it's been done in other places, it makes you scared. Because even though there are other places where, you know, break, breaking out or, you know, state creation have been peaceful. Yeah. For example, the, the whole Brexit decision. They did not carry arms. They did not, you know, go to fight against Europe. They sat down on a table yeah. like civilized people and they talked about how to break away. Yeah. But in a country like Nigeria, we haven't gotten to that point. We can definitely not equate ourselves with them. So that's why it's, it's shocking and scary when we talk about, you know, things like this yeah. in, in the country. Um, moving on now, in 2009, this day in history, June the 25th, something very shocking happened. I mean, the world of music was stunned to nope. hear the death of the famous pop star, the most awarded pop, 
you know, artist in the world, Michael Jackson. So on this day in history, when the news of his death broke out, you know, there, <laughs> there was news of websites basically crashing because people could not believe the news. They were rushing online to find out what happened and all that traffic basically sent those websites coming down. And it was a lot regarding Michael Jackson's death because it was first declared a homicide, you know, and then they said this definitely, um, maybe his, his doctor had given him certain drugs that led to that, and then it was discovered to be overdose and drugs. That's the drug there. Um, definitely, we don't recommend you looking for it to, to, to make some purchase. Definitely not, but definitely that's the drug um, that he was um, said to have overdosed on. Um, he was one of the most, you know, significant, one of the greatest, you know, cultural figures of the 20th century. I remember watching um, Michael Jackson's performance and people basically crying, fainting because of Michael Jackson. You know, he had actually planned a series of about 50 concerts in the Auto Arena in the beginning of July. Uh, but sadly, he did not leave to to perform at those 50 concerts he had planned because he passed um, weeks, weeks earlier, June 25th, 20, um, 2009. It was a very terrible incident, but because of his impact, he, he went on to receive uh, four posthumous awards. Uh, you know, he was the first artist to sell one million music downloads in a week. Michael Jackson just broke all the records. But after his death, there were, you know, lots of legal tussles about his estate and then about, you know, allegations that he sexually uh, abused children. It was just a lot, but it was on this thing in history that this very um, sensational music star uh, passed on due to overdose. Yeah, um, you know, sadly, there's some of all those things that, you know, defined um, his times um, on earth, and that is, you know, one of them, like you just mentioned, the, um, you know, sexual abuse uh, uh, claims, which he eventually was found uh, innocent um, after a very, very long uh, court case. Um, there's also the, um, no, I can't remember what the other one was now, but there are certain things that, oh yeah, the plastic surgery one, oh. um, and then controversy over whether he would have, you know, been a successful artist regardless of, you know, plastic surgery, if he decided to, you know, stay the way that he, he would, I mean, he naturally was, um, a black man. Um, but, you know, there's, so there's questions about those things, you know, and um, there's a time when there was a rumor that his nose fell off, you know, during the music video shoot. <laughs> but, you know, most importantly... That's not funny, though. <laughs> Most importantly, you know, he, he um, has to be one of the most popular uh, names in world history. And so on the day of his death, it wasn't just the music industry that was shook. It was the whole world uh, that uh, was stunned to realize that Michael Jackson was no more. Um, pretty much the same thing with Whitney Houston and a few other people, maybe Prince, you know, but I don't think anybody had the same effect or the same impact on music as um, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson. has. Um, and um, years after, of course, like you said, he also continued to win posthumous awards. Uh, there was controversy over, um, you know, the re you know co conspiracy theories really about his death, and people saying that you know he suddenly died because um, he had a, had an agreement or signed a deal with uh, Sony Music, you know, that they were going to give him back his um, rights to all his music and all of that. And you next thing you know, he's dead. You know, pretty much the same thing happened with Prince. You know, so there's always these conspiracy theories that will spring up here and there and say, you know, that these musical corporations somehow, some way, you know, find a way to kill you when uh, it seems like you're breaking away from their grip. So, uh, but nobody would ever know, you know, what the truth is. You know, we'll have to stick with what the coroner's report says and what the you know American justice system says, which is he died of, uh, from an overdose uh, from his doctor. Yes, and Simza uh, music really is in the blood because his nephew Jaffa Jackson has made his way onto the music scene. Uh, still a very young boy uh, trying to basically follow in the footsteps of his uncle Michael Jackson. So that's what we'll have for you today in history. Um, 1950, that North and South Korea war that began today, June 25th, and the death of the popular pop star Michael Jackson. Uh, stay with us. We'll begin our first conversation this morning uh, talking about the INEC registration. So do you have your voter's card? Are you interested in taking part in the electoral process to shape the future of your country? You should be, and that process starts on Monday. Do stay with us.